Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. Welcome to Modified episode number 18, where we share with you vehicles that have been accessorised and modified for everyday use and full driving. Rightio folks, I'll introduce you to the owner of this vehicle, Kieran. How are you going mate? Good, yourself? Not too bad. So you want to run us, uh, run our audience through what vehicle this is, make model, engine size and... Alright, so it's a 2012 Mazda BT50 GT, uh, obviously dual cab, a 3.2 litre five cylinder turbo diesel, which is the same as the uh, PX Ranger model. In the new Ranger, yeah? Yeah. And this comes with a rear diff locker? Factory understand. locker, yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right, well, we'll go through the whole vehicle as we always do. We'll start with the bar work. Bar work. All right, so Kieran. it's uh, ARB Deluxe Bar with scrub rails as well. Underneath it's got a bash guards, they're factory. Both bash guards are uh, factory? Uh, the first one comes from the, uh, it came with the bar work. Yep. Second is the factory underbody yard. Got a 9,000 pound winch, number plate hinge. It was originally a, uh, steel cable but yeah, that frayed and it got a bit heavy so I've replaced it with Dyneema rope but it's slightly too long for it so yeah. when I can find someone who will uh, splice it I'll get that trimmed down. Looks like a fair lot, a lot of um, rope there. How long is the rope? Uh, I think it's a 30 metre. So we move on to your side rails and side steps. Alright so again uh, ARB as you can see they've uh, saved the panel work quite a bit. Yeah they look uh, a bit used. They are. Uh, even further under the uh, brackets are quite mangled but better than my sills, so uh, they've served their purpose quite well. Oh, they held up all right. Yep, every time I hit something, I'm so glad that they're there. Well, that's what they're for, isn't it? Exactly. So down the back here, I see you got, uh, that's the factory That's factory bumper. Tow bar, yeah. Are you looking at changing that? Uh, eventually, it's on, it's on the list, so there's a lot of other things. Now onto the roof rack. So you, you mentioned you had a roof rack on the front of the cab before. Yeah, I had a Pioneer Rhino rack on the front, but um, changed it out because you can't really mount a rooftop tent on it because of the sidewalls. And uh, rather than taking it to an angle grinder, I figured I could just get a uh, track lander. Oh, so that's a flat track lander. That's a track lander. lander. Um, yeah. It's actually a factory second, so had a few scratches on it, but that's what's going to happen to it anyway, so. That's right. And on your roof rack, you got Fox Wing. Uh, Fox Wing awning and a Dutch uh, oh, rooftop tent. tent. Yeah. Right. I reckon when we do the Q&A, we'll Pop Set this up, hey? No, no worries. worries. We're back at the front again. We're going to look at your lights and your comms. All right. So your lights, what are these? 185 watt LEDs, just with the spread beam on them. Good light? Yeah, they're pretty good. They don't have quite the throw of an HID, but yeah. I don't need to see 6Ks down the road at the moment. They're more for spreading. I can actually tilt them down if I'm going to do some rock work so I can flood the front oh, of the car yeah. quite easily. You had a light bar on your roof rack before. Yeah, I did. Uh, when I uh, when I got rid of the roof rack, I sold the light bar as well, and obviously with the change in at the same time as the the change of rules. Yeah, so yeah. I thought I'll oh, save me the effort of remounting it. And your comps? Six dB aerial from Oricom, and I've got a uh, GME in the in the cab. What kind of range do you get out of this? Uh, I've never really measured it, but uh, get, I haven't had an issue with it. This is actually the second aerial. I had a just a normal spring base antenna and it would vibrate at the slightest provocation and the radio signal would just get completely mangled. So oh, I disrupted the signal. I got a, got a new one, haven't had an issue since. Tyres and lift now. So we'll start with your tyres. Yep, so they're a uh, 33 inch uh, Hankook Muddy. Um, work really well, quite quiet on road. Had them on for about 15,000 k's now and uh, not a drama. What well, did you have before? I had uh, BFG KM2s. Uh, they were at about 70% when I got the vehicle. Uh, they got really noisy really quickly. Changed to these on a recommendation and um, really happy with them. And your, kept your rims factory? Yes, factory rims. Are they 17? They are 17, so it's 17. a 285 70 17 tyre. We'll, we'll now go to your lift then. So what are you, what are you running? So it's an Ironman lift kit. Foam cell Pro Shock Absorbers. Is that the new? That's the new one. The new uh, one absolutely yeah. brilliant. I actually had uh, did a trip down the Holland track had a uh, protrusion of a disc in my lower back oh. and didn't have a problem the whole time, so quite bumpy. And it was a brave move. Yeah, well, I've <laughs> been planning for the trip for a long time and I thought, no, nah, yeah, I'm doing it. Don't miss it. Well, you mentioned it, so I noticed it. Because of the tents on there, you Yeah, it's sagging, sitting, a little sagging bit. quite a bit, so... Uh, so you're looking at put another leaf uh, either, in? Either an additional leaf or, or just upgrade the, um, upgrade the leaves to a heavy duty. What have we got here? We got a factory engine it's the uh, five cylinder 3.2 same uh, as the Ranger as you mentioned same as the yep. Ranger yep primary battery here 
hooked up with the uh, project isolator to the secondary in the back of the So back the secondary the batteries in the back? Yep. I can see why. There's not a lot of room in here. No, there isn't. We've got a um, 30 micron secondary fuel filter. 30 microns? Okay. Yep. So is that, that's running before your factory then? Yes. Yeah, that's about it for um, under the bonnet. Not a lot of modifications. I did get it um, did get it in factory warranty, so uh, oh, left yeah. a lot of that stuff until it's outside it. Snorkel, uh, that was fitted by a friend. It's great because I got to see the whole process. Um, pretty scary watching the uh, hole saw go into the side of your car for the first time. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. was that was the whole reason because I didn't want to do make a hole in my car. So yeah. so you blame uh, your mate if you stuffed it up. I blame my mate, but he's uh, he's um, been fitting forward drive accessories for a while, so yeah. he knows what he's doing. All right, we're at the back of the B250, and Kieran's gonna show us what he's got inside his fiberglass canopy. So, the uh, black bars you can see are the support structure for the uh, loading on the roof. Um, they're, they're adjustable too. They're they? adjustable, it's a, it's a universal fit kit, so uh, pretty good. Pain that, to get it in, but. Does that come with the roof rack, or is this just a oh, kit just, for uh, any roof it's rack? It's just a kit for any, any um, canopy and roof rack. There was a little bit of modification to get it to fit fit through the existing holes on the uh, top of the canopy. Okay. Oh, because you would have had the sports... Sports bars on sports the top. Sports rails, yeah. Yeah. There's uh, a couple of lights. One up the top of the tailgate there. Yeah. One on the inside of the window, which is where which pops up under the awning. And, oh, yeah, um, so when you open that up, you get light, light under there. there. And there's another one up on there, all running off just off the same switch. Lock are we done here? Yeah, it's, um, it's struggling for ideas where to put them. Didn't want to put them on the outside of the car because um, I don't have a lock kit for them. So it makes the target a little bit heavier, but easy to store, easy to get at, and um, tub liner and everything's in boxes. So it doesn't matter if they're a bit muddy when they go back in. Yeah. What well, was the second vehicle I've seen with this exact thing? You yeah. didn't get the idea from that, did you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> as far as I know, I'm the first person to do it. Handy dive knife. Uh, dive knife? Do go, do go snorkeling occasionally. So. It's a good place to keep it, and it's always handy to have something sharp to cut, well, you know, whatever needs cutting. Shark prevention? <laughs> yeah, shark <laughs> prevention is a good one. So your fridge? Yep. Oh, is that an angle? That's an angle Eclipse. Um, I so didn't know they did plastic. Yeah, it's ones. the Eclipse. It's the only version like, that they do in plastic. Are your second battery is in the back? Second battery in the back. That's a 130 amp hour, 1,000 cranking amp uh, battery run the fridge for three days um, as a freezer with no issues so oh that's not bad one of the next things to do when i get get some time is to put uh some reflective foil on the inside of these windows just to help help out with the fridge a bit so storage cases is storage cases camping tools gear. camping gear um food whatever needs to go in there fuel and water gets uh, tucked in around depending on where i'm going and for how long so i can see you're probably not really fussed about having drawers and you're pretty happy with how uh, it is. Draw drawers are definitely on the list um they are on the list yeah just to keep because these cases aren't, aren't all that strong. Just to keep some things in there permanently, recover gear and tools, uh, get a fridge slide so it's easy to get the fridge out into the tailgate, at which point I will have to remount the, the uh, recovery boards. Getting a, getting a plan together to get those done, because at the moment it's a bit of a mess with the wiring. It uh, tore through the straps, so I've had to had to rewire all the stuff okay. in the back just for this. So we'll... Um, what are we doing when it tore through the straps? I was just driving around, but it was uh, tied down to the tub liner and it, pulled, it simply just pulled through the um, oh, pulled, yeah. screws just pulled through because it's, okay. it's not that strong. Radio, we are in the interior of Kieran's B250. Um, just looking, without looking at your mods, this must be like the um, so it's, upper version? It's the top of the line uh, GT edition, so it does get the leather seats, which are actually a bit of a pain in summer, so yeah. seat cover on the driver's seat. Because you moved your seat before, it was electric. Uh, yeah, it's electric seat, so yeah. that could jerk adjustment. I haven't yet crossed, had water in the cab, so I uh, oh. kind of don't <laughs> want to find out what happens to that. Otherwise, I might oh. have the seat moving on its own. <laughs> could be problematic. All right, well, let's get straight into your nav system. You so, got a HEMA HN7, great little toy. I used the, um, the app on the I iPad previously. Yeah. Um, and when I found one of these going secondhand for a bit less, I uh, grabbed it. And Do you prefer this than the app? Uh, they're different. Uh, the app is much more intuitive in terms of ease of use, um, just flicking around the screen because it moves the same way as you do yeah. just a map on an iPad. Uh, for more intricate stuff and downloading predetermined maps and plotting things, uh, HN7. Your UHF, what do you got here? So it's a GME, um, 80 channel. Body's mounted inside the um, 
outside the case here. Oh, okay. Keep it out, keep it out of the way. Yeah. Um, oh, and you got your selections on there. Selections on there. Handheld. Oh, yeah. Guidance. Guidance. And is this where the factory locker is? Then? Yep, factory locker is the middle one. The one on the left there is the hill descent control. Oh, you got hill descent in this? Yes, so you put it into angel gear and off she goes. How do you find that works? Um, I honestly don't use it. I prefer the, prefer the control of using mm. uh, low two or three or one if it's a particularly... Uh, does it work in low set. range? It, it does work in low range. Um, I've only used it once or twice just to see if it, yeah. how it works and then okay. don't really bother. I just find I prefer the control I get myself. Yeah, P patrol the... Control, control of the manual, oh, yeah. yeah. And you got a switch over there for your lights, or yeah, yeah. The bunny burner lights are on the bunny on the other burner. Side. Scan gauge, scan gauge too. Um, I usually run the um, coolant temp, the alternator voltage. This mirror is that stock because you got a cable going. Yeah, through it on those? that's uh, that stock. It's the uh, dusk sensing mirror. So in, at night when you get the, high, the bright lights coming in from behind you, it automatically dims. So that only took you what, ten minutes? Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah, you had a bit of help with me from your yeah, mate though. Yeah, it's a bit. It is a bit quicker with two people. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, with one person, I probably wouldn't bother with the whole, mm. the whole shooting match. Yeah, fair enough. Um, you get shelter with your tent anyway. Though. Yeah, there is there is a there's a room that you can zip on the base. Yeah, which and, you would do if you were by yourself. Oh, if I was on my own, probably not. This. Okay. Just um, probably keep the awning and use a swag. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll catch you. Okay, so you leave the tent home then. Leave the tent at home. Yeah. So do you find that you're going to have to anchor these down um, when it's windy? Yeah, in the wind, certainly. Um, but uh, like on a still day like this, not a problem. Yeah. Oh, we'll have a look at your tent, eh? Hey? Yeah, sure. Should we have a look inside? Yeah. So what do you call this, a two-man tent? Yeah, two-man. That's pretty spacious. So yeah. if you had um, a blanket and stuff up here, could you just leave it in? Um, it doesn't. It doesn't shut down quite as nicely. Not um, with pillows in there. I okay. thought it was just a blanket. So. so just pull it all out then. Just chuck it all out. Yeah, it's usually yeah. just a sleeping bag and a pillow. So they sit on the back seat. Fair enough. Ah, nice and spacious. Yeah. Does it get hot up there? Um, no. If you pop the uh, vents open. If you pop the vents open, it doesn't. Yeah. Rightio, first question, if someone bought a B250, this model, and it was stock, what would you recommend they do first, like the first three things? Definitely say the uh, tyres, the stock tyres um, on it, they're just roads, so definitely if you want to go off and play in any, any rough stuff, um, good set of all terrains or mud terrains. Next I would uh, suggest a bull bar, just uh, especially in WA, remote roads, um, cattle, kangaroos, and yeah, probably a battery system so you can keep your drinks cold. So we've got tyres. Then we got front end bar work yep. and batteries. And what is your one thing you must have when you go full driving or camping? For me, it's the camera. Pretty much don't go anywhere anywhere without it because um, I live in a beautiful state, so. I know, I know that off. feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you do, yeah. Yeah. Ah, cool. So you're, you're a bit of a, a photographer yourself? Yeah, getting into it. Um, got my own Facebook page running, trying to trying to grow that, at least fund, fund the hobby if, if not a full-time business. A question I haven't asked in previous modified, what is one thing you should look out for on this vehicle? Um, when I got this one, I had a number of problems with the gearbox leaking. Um, turns out it is a somewhat common problem, especially in the manual models um, of the 2011-2012 make. So uh, yeah, definitely keep an eye on that. Um, mine was replaced under warranty, completely knackered. So uh, that was only at 40, 40,000 K, so definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah, so the gearbox uh, leaked. Gearbox leaked, so it looks it looks like it's actually leaking from the bottom, but what's happening is it's uh, well, the oil is coming out through the breather in the top, oh. and uh, it's there's some kind of fault there. Yeah. But yeah, it is. It was definitely a warranty issue. Like a bit of pressure or something. Yeah. Overheating uh, coming out. Looked like they had a doctor write the uh, fault report, so I can't even read the handwriting. <laughs> and my parents are doctors, so <laughs> it's shocking. But it's fixed and um, yeah, haven't yeah. had a problem with it since. Okay, so look out for your gearbox. Yes. So what is your next modification, or the next big size modification for the vehicle? Um, so at the moment it's looking like it's going to be drawers. I'm um, getting, getting a few quotes to get a storage system set up there, um, including the electric, so I hopefully get an inverter so I can charge things like laptops and cameras. Yeah. Um, you going custom? Um, yeah, probably going custom. Yeah. Uh, your top three trips in this vehicle? Uh, so. Longest trip and um, one of my favourites was the Holland Track uh, back in September last year. That was great fun. Um, went from Hyden all the way through to Kalgoorlie, 
Second one, uh, recently we went to Sandy Cape during Bay. It was a good, uh, good fun overnight trip. Just out on the beach. Beautiful, beautiful weather, beautiful warm water. And then, trip? Right, Adelaide Road in the southwest. Oh, yeah. Blackwood River. Well, thanks for having the vehicle no problem. on here. Thank you. Righto, folks, if you want to know more about Kieran's BT50 and the mods, there's a link down below. Also, it's got tips on, on what mods to do, on what to look out for. So there's a lot more information there that isn't covered in this video. So you can go to that link right here on the website. And you can subscribe right here. Thanks again for watching. Take care of the tracks and trails and we'll catch you in another video. See ya.